Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of testicular torsion and bilateral testicular microlithiasis. A 13 year old male patient came with severe left hemiscrotal pain and swelling for around 4 days. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see the right testis. You can see diffuse echogenic foci casting comatal artifacts. This is the testicular microlithiasis. This is not the patient's complaint site, but you can see diffuse microlithiasis on both sides. There's a glimpse of left testis here. This is the left testis where you still can see this diffuse echogenic foci with comatal artifacts. If you look at the epididymis, it is solid and heterogeneous. If you look at the testicular parenchyma, it's a little bit difficult but you can see tiny cystic spaces. These anechoic cystic spaces are not normal. The overlying scrotal skin is slightly thickened also. So here is the right testis with diffuse microlithiasis. This is the left testis with similar feature. You can also see left sided mild hydrocele here but we will look at that part later. Here is a magnified view of the right testis with diffuse microlithiasis. Now we have put the color Doppler on the right testis and you can see the normal vascularity. We have adjusted pulse repetition frequency or PRF to ensure the view of enough vascular flow within the testis so that we can compare it with the left one. Now here is the left part. You can see no vascularity within the testis and epididymis. You can see some skin flow here but no flow within the parenchyma and within the visualized epididymis. It indicates left testicular torsion. Now without Doppler you can see the left testis shows tiny cystic spaces within this microlithiasis and you can see this is the heterogeneous collection within the scrotal sac with internal septations. This is an inflammatory or hemorrhagic collection. We have put color Doppler here and still there is no flow within the epididymis. Now going upwards on the left, you can see a lamellated mass with whirlpool sign. The surrounding vascularity is well seen but you can't see any vascularity inside the epididymis and the spermatic cord. So this is the area where the torsion happened. So when you see any torsion, you just move the transducer transversely upward from the testis and you will see this type of images. Here is the last video and you can see the left testis with diffuse microlithiasis and tiny cystic spaces. These spaces are nothing but necrotic areas and the epididymis is swollen, the skin is thickened. The right testis is apparently normal in size for this age and you can see diffuse microlithiasis. The left testis is slightly enlarged or swollen. You can see diffuse microlithiasis but the parenchyma is relatively darker here and you can see tiny cystic spaces indicating the areas of necrosis. This is the right testis with microlithiasis and on the right image you can see the vascularity which is within normal limit. With similar setting this is the left one. You can't see any vascularity within the testis and the visualized part of epididymis. You can see vascularity within the thickened scrotal skin. This is the left sided hydrocele with internal septations indicating hemorrhagic or inflammatory contents. 
This is the lamellated mass cephalate to the left testis which indicates coiled spermatic cord components forming the whirlpool sign with twisting or whirling on color Doppler. So in summary, the left testis and epididymis are solen with inhomogeneous parenchymal ecotexture. Multiple irregular anechoic cystic spaces are seen within the left testicular parenchyma. Color Doppler shows no definite vascularity or detectable flow within the left testis and epididymis. There is a lamellated mass with concentric layering just cephalate to the left testis representing the coiled spermatic cord components forming the whirlpool sign with twisting or whirling on color Doppler. There are discrete punctate non-shadowing ecogenic foci seen diffusely scattered throughout the bilateral testicular parenchyma with cometal artifacts indicating testicular microlithiasis. There was also left-sided mild hydrocyl with internal non-vascular septations. Left hemiscrotal skin is thickened. So this features concluded as a case of left testicular early subacute torsion with reactionary hydrocyl with bilateral grade 3 or diffuse testicular microlithiasis. Now the take-home message. This part will be a little bit longer. In case of incomplete testicular torsion, color Doppler may show vascularity within the testicular parenchyma. In that type of case, an increase in arterial resistive index of more than 0.75 and the absence of intravas intratesticular venous flow may help confirm the testicular torsion. We have four phases of testicular torsion. In acute phase, the findings may be normal. You may see scrotal skin thickening and mild hydrocele. Testis and epidermis get enlarged and hypoechoic. On color Doppler, there won't be any intratesticular flow with normal peritesticular vascularity. In early subacute phase, you will see some anechoic necrotic spaces within the testicular parenchyma. There may be hypoechoic mass of hemorrhage also. In late subacute phase, there will be progressive decrease of the early subacute phase findings with increase in peritesticular flow. In chronic phase, the features will get normalized, the testis will get small and eco-poor, the epididymis may show persistent enlargement with increased ecogenicity. So our case was of early subacute phase. If you see testicular microlithesis in a focal area, that cluster of testicular microliths may represent testicular tumor. And if you see clusters of microliths adjacent to a solid mass, it indicates germ cell tumor. We have three different grades or types of testicular microlithiasis. The grade 1 or limited microlithiasis will show less than 5 microcalcifications per field of view. For grade 2 or classic testicular microlithiasis, you will see 5 to 10 microcalcifications per field of view. And if it is more than 10, then that will be the diffuse testicular microlithiasis or grade 3 type. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and visit imagingstudy.com for more cases. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.